I'm going to introduce KP Anderson. He's the producer and writer. He's known for the Wayne Brady show, The Soup, Last Comic Standing. Um, and he's going to tell us about the prank consultants. I just watched the first date videos yesterday uh, from Santa Monica. Stuart, those are those are awesome. I, I laughed so hard. That was really fun. Thank you. Um, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for KP Anderson. Where are you, KP? Right here. Thank, thank you so much, Rick. And, uh, and what a fascinating, fabulous forum this is. I had no idea that this existed. Kevin, thank you for, uh, thank you for inviting us into this so that we could talk about it. Um, we have a pretty big team. I'm just going to introduce us as, as a group and then let Stuart kind of tell you about, uh, tell you about uh, his space in, in pranking and the sort of area that he's created and, uh, and what an incredible following he has. And, uh, and then Courtney and Jason, who are with us, will, uh, will take you through sort of the idea of what we want to do with the prank consultants. Really quickly, Jesse, I'm originally from Minnesota. Um, so next time, do one about your own state, man. Come on. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, I had to get the Minnesota, Wisconsin dig in there somewhere. Um, um, so, yes, yeah, so we are the prank consultants. Uh, Stuart is our star, Stuart Edge. Uh, Stuart, if you're not familiar with him, uh, comes to us with uh, 25 million YouTube subscribers. He 2.5. Sorry. What, what is it? Oh no, I'm sorry. Twenty two. Unless you're unless you're manifesting yeah, the decimal the point. <laughs> Thank you. Two point five million, million, but hundreds of millions of uh, hundreds Brilliant. of millions of views. Um, two point five million. Thank you. Sorry, I uh, I moved the decimal point while I was rambling on. But it's um, um, towards twenty five million. Yeah, yeah, you put me on a clock and look what happens. Um, um, <laughs> along with Stuart. We have uh, our, our director and producer, David Franska, who's, uh, who's right there, David, mind uh, waving, and Courtney Cronin and Jason Sotolongo. Between David, myself, Courtney, and Jason, if you've seen Hidden Camera produced television in the past like 20 years, one of us or multiple parts of us were working on it. David started out with Punked with Ashton Kutcher and moved all the way through the Jamie Kennedy experiment and, um, and everything since then. Uh, Jason and Courtney, have been on so many shows. I myself uh, did a did a thing through uh, with Lionsgate with Kevin Hart and Lyft, uh, Lyft Legend, um, through my company Pygmy Wolf that did really really well, and that was actually an integration uh, with Lyft, um, where Kevin was a uh, was in a full prosthetic and driving a and driving a Lyft car with unsuspecting passengers. Um, so we have a lot of experience in this world. Stuart brings to it. Uh, a passion a for prank but also a passion for prank that hasn't been seen as so beyond being incredibly consumer friendly it's also very family friendly and fun because there's always an uplifting end uh, rick you were talking about those santa monica dates there's always something that makes you feel good at the end and that's something that those of us who have worked in the on that side of things for a long time have been kind of clamoring to get back to so with that i'm going to shut up i'm going to let Stuart and his 2.5 million subscribers do a little bit of talking and then courtney and jason will take it away from there thank you uh thank you for the the um wonderful praise and thanks rick for being a fan of that content i create video content across many different social media platforms and all of them have a public element to it where i'm interacting with the public in some way whether it's tipping drive-through workers the amount that they ask for or setting up an instant date on the beach uh normally i go into how i got into that but in the spirit of storytelling i'd like to share really quickly um a moment that happened from my childhood that I think led to the content I create. And I think that will lead into the understanding, the idea we're gonna pitch. Um, I had the, this is a vintage 1996 Britney Spears backpack. I bought on eBay for 66 bucks. Honestly, it was a steal. Um, and so the reason I bought this is to tell a story because um, when I was in the seventh grade, there was a sixth grade girl standing with this backpack in the pizza line in front of me. Now, I was a fan of Britney, so I could have made a friend there, but instead I was with friends that I didn't know if they were fans of Britney. So I decided to make fun of the backpack and I said something like, oops, she did it again or something dumb. My comedy career crashed from an early age. Uh, I didn't think anything of it until the next week I saw the same girl in the same pizza line with the same backpack. And this is what I saw. She had... Um, taken the image of Britney Spears and she sharpied out the backpack. 
And as a little seventh grader, I realized like, oh no, am I a bully? Is this what being a bully is? That something I had said had made her take, because this is not what the backpack looked like before. And so I realized at a young age that like the interactions we have with people really impact them. And so, um, and I also learned to not be embarrassed about the things that we enjoy. And so from a young age, I just decided that when I interacted with people, I hope I could uplift them. And so that has channeled into the content I create today and just like to always, you know, make people feel inspired about, about what they're doing and, and go on their day feeling great. And so this idea that we have the prank consultants is, is essentially that is helping people help their people feel like um, they are worth a million bucks. Um, we have a great team, uh, a great format. I'm very excited to be a part of this. And I'll pass it off to Courtney and Jason who can tell a little bit more about uh, the rest of the show. Okay, um, Jason, you want me to start? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Hi, okay. everybody. Well, hi, <laughs> nice to meet everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, so like KP said, I'll just go back to what he said, um, that we've all been working in prank for many years. And um, that's why this group kind of came together. We've all worked um, with each other in different shows and, and um, basically keep coming back to each other and wanting to work together again. So we seem to all have the same idea of kind of what's funny, the hashtag that's trending today is give thanks, not pranks. And it's kind of funny that it's April Fool's Day and we're pitching a prank show, but um, that's a little bit of what we're trying to do here. Like all the years of doing this, I've been a part of so many pranks that kept me up at night that I felt terrible about. And having people sign a release and be like, hi, you know, like, thanks for letting us make fun of you on national television. Here, sign this piece of paper, bye. You know, and that was it. And all like the setup and production and really sometimes it takes weeks to like put together a really good organic, real prank. Um, you know, or several. And um, after doing all that work, really, it can't be done without the mark. The person being pranked is really the star. So why aren't we celebrating them more? Why aren't we compensating them in some way for letting us have fun with them? And really, everybody's laughing, but they're laughing too. You know, it's one of those pranks where at the end, people are watching it going, I want to get pranked on that you know, instead of being afraid, like, are there cameras in here? So it's it's basically finding that fine line between thanks and pranks, where it's still really funny and really fun. Um, there's still that element of surprise. And then there's the element of celebrating this person who has just given us so many laughs and so much entertainment, you know, at their expense, but not really. They're part of it. So this show um, came together for that exact reason. Let's yeah. do something fun. And, and this is what it is. That's what the prank consultants is. It's really, uh, it's a show where family and friends get to prank each other with Stuart's help, of course. And we've assembled a team of Hollywood's best hidden spe camera specialists. We're going to help people at home play next level pranks in what will be the ultimate prank competition for their chance to win $10,000. Now, this is a hilarious show, but it's never mean spirited. So everyone gets in on the fun, and especially the mark. And, and to point out that prank shows are typically uh, targeted towards a male audience. Well, this one, we feel we're, we're gonna bring in the female audience as well because it's never mean-spirited. Yes, and so the format um, is real simple. We have three contestants that we've narrowed down through a series of submissions of people that we've worked really closely with, providing them with writers who've been doing this a long time that really understand the genre, producers who know where to put what where, we have David Fransky, who I think is the best director in Hidden Camera. A lot of people agree with me. And he knows how to <laughs> he knows how to tell these people where to put the cameras. You know, we bring in audio. We know exactly how to set this up to make it look its best. But we have contestants that we give a theme to. Um, let's say for this example, the theme is exotic animals. And every show will do that. We'll have a theme. And then we'll go um, and choose the people who come back to us with the most original ideas of what to do with that theme. Then we go through the prank consultants process with the producers, the writers, we start figuring out props, things we can send them, things that they can go out and get with the small budget we also provide. And then we get these pranks in motion. 
And, yeah, and, they, and, and, and the point uh, add to that, Courtney, every competitor gets to put their spin on their theme, you know, so it's not, it's not, we're telling, not telling them what to do. They get to put their take on it. And so, but the, so that they don't get carried away, we, <laughs> the prank consultants, give them guidelines and consult with them to keep it all under control because we won't want wild animals roaming the streets or anything like that. Right. And it's really, if you break it down, it's elevating the amateur internet prankster to, you know, like television show, uh, building a prank. It's not just one beat, you know, of dragging somebody out the front door on their couch, which is funny, but that's super mean. You know, there's multiple beats here. We do have a story. We build um, up to this big reveal. And with all the hard work they've put in, they are these three people competing to win $10,000. We're going to give them something for their efforts at the end. So like, let's say, for example, the three contestants on this, this show for exotic animals, the first contestant comes back to us with, I want to be the next Tiger King, prank my roommate, tell her that we're getting a baby tiger and it's on its way here. So a, a sample beat from that would be, they've got a big stake. They're shoving fake tranquilizers into the stake saying, we got to get this ready for when the tiger gets here, because if it doesn't know where it is, it might go a little nuts and we're going to have to throw this and it eats it and then it goes to sleep. So uh, I've been doing this for so long, I touched my eye and now I can't see and I'm feeling a little dizzy and I need your help. So that's just a way to set it in motion, get the mark involved. Obviously no tiger shows up, so there's no real emotional <laughs> distress. So it's still funny and there's lots of funny beats we can put in there to build up to a big reveal. So, and contestant number two is a couple who wants to prank their kids, kids want a pet. Okay, fine, we're gonna get you a snake. It's an anaconda and it's on its way here now, but it's a vegetarian anaconda. It costs a lot of money to feed, now we're all vegetarians too. So how they could probably keep this going for a week. I mean, we might be time stamping this prank every 10 seconds with day two, day three, you know, and then the kids are either gonna want it or not. Both are funny, it's a win-win situation. And contestant number three is a woman who wants to prank her husband. She's always bringing in strays. This time she's brought in a flock of retired show parrots and they're living in the bedroom, but of no one's fault, they have chewed through the screen, they've gotten out. Now they need to go out into the street and get these parrots to come back by calling out their old trick <laughs> commands. So instead of making it mean spirited where the mark is out there looking like a silly person, the contestant is saying, I need you to help me. So either they are, which is hilarious, or they're not, and they're gonna be a jerk about it, which is hilarious. So it's, it's a win-win, nobody's ever forced to be in a situation you know, that they are stuck in, don't want to be where it again becomes mean spirited. This is funny. This is fun. So once the three contestants, we've seen the behind the scenes, we've seen their pranks at the end of the show where Stuart's in the big shiny floor studio looking all cool. Um, we get to meet those contestants with the marks. We've ever big screens. We get to talk to them for a second. We get to hear the marks reaction to what happened to them. We want their story. Like I had no idea, I came home from work and there you were with the steak. And I'm like, what is going on in here? I had no idea what was happening. I was so surprised, boy, this was fun. So um, in real time, we present the winner with $10,000. We've had a hidden panel watching the whole time who we don't really bring in till the end. So we're not eating away too much time of seeing these pranks. We want them to breathe. We wanna see what's happening. We wanna see the wheels turning behind the, you know, behind the scenes and how we're helping to elevate the amateur prank. So once the $10,000 is presented to the winner in real time, so we get a great reaction, um, we have another twist, almost another reveal where Stuart has a stipulation in his generous nature the contestant has to do something really kind for the mark with the money. They either have to split it with them, maybe give it all to them, take them on a trip, buy them a car, get them a new phone, get them you know, new bedding for their room, help them pay for college, something kind. And that's the show. So to sum up, you've got uplifting, you've got a uh, uh, hot new talent with all kinds of, uh, with all kinds of recognition. Uh, and you've got, since there's enough people of a certain age on this, uh, on this Zoom, you've got the traveling Wilburys of hidden camera production uh, behind it. That's, that's, what, that's what you got. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to jump in here and say thanks for doing this. Um, I, I wish we had shown a little bit of your work because it's hilarious. And, you know, I don't know if you want to share screen, Colleen, or something, or if you want to, Courtney, if you want to oh, do that. Jason, do you want to share screen? Um, that I love the first date stuff and it's done so well. And that table pops up so fast 
and the wait staff right there is just a, how you did that, the behind the scenes of how you made that happen. Um, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Listen, I'm a kid from the 60s. I grew up with Candid Camera and Alan Funtz. You know, I love this stuff. Um, and love to hear more about, you know, what's your ideas about, you know, how do you get a brand involved in this? What's the, what's the creative that, you know, how, what's the integration with the brand? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of opportunities. Like if we get the uh, if we do get the uh, the the date uh, uh, bit pulled up, which Stuart can talk about the execution of it. It was just brilliant, and it's why we all sort of like uh, when when Stuart uh, expressed interest, uh, we, where we were all just like, oh my god, this guy really knows how to you know how to how to execute what he does, and he puts a lot of thought into it. And I think that like a lot of the branding opportunities right inside of these types of bits become super, super uh, available just because, again, because there's a positive outcome to these things, it gives the, it gives the brand the feel of a sense of humor and it gives the brand the feel of a, uh, 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 the feel of also being, you know, being uh, um, positive with that sense of humor, which is so rare to find these days. And if you want to watch this real quick, you can yeah, even just, just about roll, roll about a, a minute or a minute and a half of this. Um, yeah. We got about five minutes left. Cool. And just imagine if, if the if the food were from Applebee's or something here. Man, am I starving. What's up, guys? Stuart Edge here with Tiffany Albert and Jarek 120. We're here in Santa Monica, and we're going to be creating an instant date. We're going to be spontaneous. Sexy. Thank you. Oh, how's it going? Yeah. Glad you could make it on such short notice. <laughs> Is that your boyfriend? Yeah. Hey there. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Oh, hey. Adam. Tiffany. I thought that the beach was a pretty romantic first date. Yeah, definitely. So, um, do you want kids? So we have on the menu too. And, uh, you know, yeah. waiter comes out. Pizza? You look great today. Did you dress up for us? You are <laughs> very beautiful, man. You look stunning. So you want to get married then? Why not? I've tried just you know looking for the right guy and once it comes along why wait you know so the instant date uh i actually ended up meeting a really good friend on one of those dates and we've been great friends ever since so um it's been pretty cool the the idea with that i just went about and i was like how do we go make someone's day um and there you can go so many different directions on how do you just surprise someone and make them feel like a million bucks and the idea of an instant date uh, we followed that up with an instant spa for moms. Moms would hit a thing and we'd bring out this full uh, luxurious soft chair where they would sit down and we give them some, uh, some luxury. We've also done this format in other ways with things that can be a little bit more drawn out. Um, I wanted to be able to give someone uh, new furniture. So we set up a yard sale with very low quality items like a, a fridge and a TV and people would come buying uh, these items because they need them for the house and then I would take them away to sign the paper and then I would have a team switch out the item for a brand new item this was partnered with a furniture company and then when we went back they'd be like wait this isn't the item that I bought this is brand new and I was like no this is the item that's been there the entire time what are you talking about <laughs> and so we were just surprising people with brand new stuff and the theme is how do we make people's day and do it in a fun hitting camera prank way and i think the ability to take that with the rest of the the world and having people be able to surprise their loved ones is, is amazing yeah and it's one area oh sorry TKP. Oh, no, just to put a little capper on it sorry kevin just to put a little capper on that thought is when you talk about how the brands associate it's also a great thing for the brands to be able to see since we're making the real people the stars of this by teaching them how to execute these these pranks it allows the viewer to, you know, see themselves in it and see that connection with the with the bit and with the brand that's attached to it. So I think it becomes it becomes super organic super quickly. Exactly that, and it's multifaceted. So you got Stewart's channels, you have the channels of the brands that are going to be sponsoring it potentially as well, so putting content on their owned and operated channels. And then we see this as like an Avod play where the brand finances outright has some co-ownership in the IP as well as if they are the studio and then distributing it to the most relevant 
platform with the most relevant audience, be it a Roku, be it a Pluto or something like that. And there's content on social media, there's content on Avod, there's licensing windows elsewhere. This can be and should be huge and big. That's why this team is together. Because if you just want to do an integration with Stuart, he has his crack team ready to go. This is something much bigger than that. And that's why I wanted to bring it to, to you guys. Because I think um, with your connections to the brands and you guys as brands and, and advertisers yourselves, I think there could be something really cool to be done together. And we've got all the pieces. We have the connections to the Plutos and the Avods as well for distribution. It's about finding the right financing partner that wants to creatively align with the team and, and make something great. Uh, Stuart, have you guys worked directly with Lyft in the past? No, I, I have not personally, okay. but, but I have, okay. yeah, I have, I have a relationship. I have a pretty long standing relationship with them from my, from the stuff that I did with Kevin Hart. Okay. So, you know, Austin Schumacher at, at Lyft most likely. Yeah. I love Austin. He's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. He's on our advisory board. Oh, um, and uh, Austin's now been elevated to head of brand marketing. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, started in entertainment marketing is, is, is now leads brand. Wow, um, that's great for him. Please tell him I said hi. He and I spent the long days in the back of a trail car following Kevin around the valley, uh, uh, pestering people. So the, the undercover lift, were you involved in those? We were not, we were, we didn't do undercover lift. We did the specific uh, lift legend, which was through Lionsgate, Laugh Out Loud, uh, Kevin's company, Pygmy Wolf, my company, and uh, lift. And now, Laugh Out Loud is continuing on with a new version of, uh, of Lyft stuff um, that I'm not, I'm doing, I'm running a show for ABC right now. Um, so, but, so I'm not involved in that one, but I know that Kevin and team are still doing it. Oh, 20 minutes. This is like television. We, ha we have to move on. I, I'm a producer <laughs> in my ear. You guys, well, thank you all again. Thanks for being here. I love what you do. I'm a big fan. I'm going to help you every way I can. And I hope everybody else on this Zoom will as well. So thanks so much. We will be in touch. I've got ideas that I'll follow up with you with, with Kevin and the team here. So Stuart, rock on, dude. I love, I love your work. Thank you. It's an honor.